morning. Uh, so I'm uh, Ning Hui Li from Purdue University. Uh, this work is uh, uh, mostly done by uh, my former PhD student, uh, Wei Ning Yang. Uh, he recently graduated and joined Google, so he's cha changing his uh, visa status, so that makes uh, traveling abroad uh, uh, very difficult. So that's why he couldn't be here, and I, I'll be presenting this paper. And Omar, uh, w Omar was a uh, postdoc in my group uh, when we were doing this work, and he recently joined University of Iowa as assistant professor. And uh, Robert Proctor is a distinguished professor in psycho uh, of psychology from Purdue University, so we've been collaborating on usability, secure, usable security research for a few years. And Ai Ping Xiong uh, is uh, his uh, graduate student. So uh, I think most of us will agree, even though passwords had password-based authentication has uh, many weaknesses, but it's going to be here with us. Um, uh, for a, a number of reasons, uh, it's easy to understand, to use, it's uh, easy to deploy, and people sort of uh, expect it, people know how to use it uh, to a certain uh, degree. So one of the main problems with password-based authentication is people tend to choose um, uh, passwords that are easy to guess. Um, and as you can see, the, uh, in fact, the popular passwords trend doesn't change very much, uh, at least over a short period of time. So um, I think it is true that we are not born with the ability to create strong passwords that are difficult to guess and at the same time easy, uh, easy to remember. Uh, so in fact, uh, two years ago while I was working on uh, password security and my son Patrick, who was uh, 10 years old at the time, uh, one day uh, asked me, you got to teach Brian, who is uh, his best friend, how to choose password because he was using his name. So I think it's a very common phenomenon that people will choose uh, easy to guess password. But hopefully, creating strong password is a skill that can be taught so that people can learn how to create uh, difficult to guess at the same time easy to remember password. Of course, in order to teach such skills, then we have to know what to teach. We have to know what works. We have to, uh, and then figure out how to effectively teach them. So what to teach? Um, so in fact, uh, some of us in our community is teaching the public. Uh, so this is uh, from Bruce Schneier's uh, blog, uh, Schneier on Security. And uh, so he mentioned that you need a strategy because uh, most of the st natural way people come up with will uh, result in passwords that are easy to, to guess. And he called it um, uh, uh, Schneier, uh, 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 Schneier's method, I think. Oh no, it's, uh, oh, it's, on the, it's on the next, yeah, here. So he called this uh, scheme, Snyder scheme, uh, which is uh, essentially a mnemonic sentence-based strategy. So you take a sentence and then turn it into uh, a password. Um, so I think uh, some, of, uh, uh, some, of the, some of us in the audience will probably disagree calling this uh, Snyder scheme, and I would certainly disagree because uh, this scheme has been studied in the community for, uh, for a long time. So uh, back in 2000, uh, Jeff Yan from uh, Ross Anderson's group uh, studied mnemonic sentence strategy. So they did a, a very, uh, so very interesting real world st uh, study. So they have uh, three, uh, around 300 students coming in and they choose password according to three different methods, a control group, a mnemonic sentence group, and then a, a, a another group choose a random password. And then they compare the usability and the security of password chosen uh, between these uh, uh, three groups, and they found that um, uh, mnemonic sentence-based uh, strategy resulted in much more uh, usable password, e easier to remember, uh, compared with the randomly generated password. Um, uh, at the same time, using their method for assessing security, they concluded um, passwords generated by mnemonic sentence strategy are as strong as uh, a random, uh, random password. So that's, uh, look at it, it's a little bit strong, so then how did they derive this uh, conclusion? So the, the method they use to assess the strength of a uh, strategy is they first collect password under a strategy uh, using a human subject study, and then they apply state-of-art password cracking algorithm to see how many of them can be cracked. And this is a standard approach, and it's used uh, in, in, in Yen's work, but also in uh, uh, work by Core, et cetera, uh, from a CMU group, and also by uh, uh, Wu and uh, Proctor from Purdue, um, study uh, password generated under the mnemonic sentence strategy. So in fact, 
this is a strategy that, in, in a sense, our community know most about. I'm actually not aware of any other uh, study for any other strategy. So this is a strategy we have studied a lot. Um, but we feel that this evaluation method has some weaknesses because they're using the current password attack tools. And these, are ta these tools are adapted to current, to today's password distribution. They are not adapted to the password generated under this, uh, this strategy. So for example, uh, in our uh, experiment, we actually uh, e evaluated a number of other uh, methods. One of them is you pick two words, and then you insert a special character between the two words. So using this method, using state-of-art uh, probabilistic password models, Markov-based models, we find that that method is as strong as mnemonic sentence and, and, and any number of other strategies. So you may say, wait a minute, that strategy is not, not secure. If I know that's what you are doing, I will pick the most common word, and then I will try the, the uh, special character in between, and I can guess them. Now, that's, that's very true, but exactly the same kind of uh, argument can be made against uh, using this to evaluate mnemonic sentence-based strategy. So for example, one natural strategy is suppose we, uh, we suggest this and uh, the public is so nice that they all started adopting it. So then there will be password leakage, then we can build a dictionary for passwords created under this strategy and then use it to, to attack other passwords. So how well will that work? Or even if I don't have this kind of password leakage, I can make a dictionary by sen of sentences if we understand better how people choose uh, sentences, and then we can generate a password from them. Now, how well will mnemonic sentence-based strategy uh, stand up against this attack? So the, the method we uh, adopt is actually something have been uh, 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 suggested uh, by, by other researchers in the earlier is to evaluate the probability distribution of the password resulted from such a strategy. So to put it very simply, suppose we have 10,000 users following this strategy, and if they mostly choose different password, then this is a good strategy, at least to me. Um, and if when they follow this strategy, we have a lot of collisions. For example, uh, one th 100 people choose one password, and the second most common password are chosen by 60 people, and so on and so forth. Then I would say it's a weak strategy, because if you have that kind of collision, people will figure out how to find the most common password and then guess them. So essentially, the, the metric we want to use is to assess collision. So there are any number of metrics you can use. So we started with the metrics of counting how many uh, passwords or sentences are used more than once in, the, in our sample group. Um, but, but later we, we decided actually the, uh, some of the metrics suggested in previous work uh, will work as well as the, the collision metric because they are more or less measuring the same thing. So one metric is just the most common password, uh, what percentage of users choose that? And another is uh, the, the 10 most common password, what percentage of users choosing that? So because we have a relatively small sample group, so 10 is the, the, the largest number that we think are meaningful. So thinking about top 100 or more, that doesn't make too much sense. So this is uh, suggested by Joseph uh, Bono, but also the, the metric actually go back earlier. So let's start uh, evaluating uh, pass uh, mnemonic sentence-based strategies. So we use uh, uh, Amazon Mechanic Turk to conduct the human subject study. We have uh, IRB approval, or maybe I think it's exemption. Uh, so we, we recruited around 800 participants and, uh, to follow a strategy variance. And we collect both the sentence they chose and also the, the, the password. So the, we started with the, this uh, version of the strategy. So this is uh, taken from the most recent study uh, so, uh, from CMU group. So you can read it yourself. Uh, so basically, uh, it, give an example with uh, the famous quote from, um, uh, from Gettysburg uh, address by, 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 by Abraham Lincoln. So how does this matter up? Uh, so the result came back, we were truly surprised. We, we didn't expect the, the result we see. So out of uh, 864 participants, 22 of them chose the same sentence. So I, I want to pause just a second so for you to think about what that sentence might be, and I think most of you will guess it correctly. To be or not to be, that is a question. And among the 22, so seven of them choose this, uh, uh, the first version of password, six of them choose uh, another version, and then there are some other variations. Uh, uh, so, uh, and the second most common choose sentence is uh, appeared nine times. So this one I think is a little bit harder to guess. In fact, 
I didn't, I didn't understand the sentence when I first saw it. So I, I think that showed that I didn't grow up in an English language culture, because if I did, then I would naturally know what. So this is, I, I, I Googled it and found that uh, this is, uh, because uh, all the 26 letters appear in this uh, sentence, so this was often used when you first learn typing. So, um, so uh, in fact, using our metrics, we find that this, if you use this, it's no more secure than the current uh, RockU dataset or any other uh, Yahoo, any other popular dataset. So if everybody started using the, the, the one we just uh, uh, shown on the previous slide, then it's no more better. So, um, so just this is a little bit more, uh, a little bit more information from this uh, study. So the third most uh, commonly used sentence, I think we all know that. That's uh, not surprising. Um, so how do we fix it? Now, looking at the result and then looking back at the strategy, uh, I think all of us will realize wh where, what is the problem, right? So because the, the example used here is a famous quote, so then naturally people follow it will, will use the famous quote. And we didn't mention, we just say, think of a memorable sentence. Of course, the most memorable sentence are the famous quote. So then it's the, it's the instruction we are using that is a, that is a problem. So then, naturally, we, uh, we, we, we did another study. We follow, uh, we change the instruction so that, what, on the one hand, we emphasize that you should choose a personalized sentence so it's meaningful to you and so other people are unlikely to use. And on the other hand, we use the example that is more personalized. So looking back, I don't think this is the greatest example for choosing password, but um, I think it, it, it sort of served its purpose. Uh, it, it, it was what we had back then. So. Um, when this group come back, so we have uh, uh, 777 participants, there's no collision. So there's no collision in sentences, no collision, of, there's no collision in password. So great. And um, so it, it, it's not because nobody used the popular sentence. It's in fact, the most popular sentence, to be or not to be, is still used by some user, but it's only used by one. So it's just the likelihood of people choosing that is much lower. Uh, so then we realize exactly what you tell the user is very important. So then we see, okay, now we have to understand, we have to see what are the exact instructions used by previous research, used by Schneier, used in Yen's study, uh, how well they, they work. And then also we, infer, we sort of va vary the two things. One is we use a personalized example. The other is uh, we emphasize you should choose a sentence uh, other people are unlikely to use. Now, which one is more important? If we just have the personalized instruction part, how well this will work. If we don't have that part, instead we have lots of personalized example, how well will that work? So uh, overall, we uh, conducted study with the six variants of a mnemonic sentence uh, strategy, and there's also a control group where people are just asked to choose a password of length at this eight so that we can uh, compare them. So this is the result of uh, using uh, state-of-art um, uh, password uh, model to crack them. So we plot this, uh, what we call probability threshold graph, which we uh, proposed in, uh, in a paper in Oakland uh, in, in 2014. So essentially, the, the x-axis uh, the, the x -axis shows the, the, the inverse log of the probability of the password in that model. And the y-axis shows how many passwords in the data set are cracked. So there are uh, two existing data sets we use as benchmark, so Yahoo and PHPBB. So they are the two uh, leftmost lines. So if you look at the figure, you will see at the point where the model is able to crack about 80% of password in Yahoo and PHPBB, they are only do, able to uh, crack about 10% or less of the, the, the password under this strategy. So this, uh, this red here is the control group, so it's people just uh, choose a new password. And so this is uh, uh, stronger than Yahoo and PHPBB, but much worse than, than the one we have. So if you only look at this kind of a cracking result, this, all of these are very, very strong. But as we said, uh, that's uh, not the case if we consider the password distribution. So this, is, uh, uh, this slide summarizes the result we have. So for the, for the, uh, the first method, the gen stands for generic, and ex stands for example. So this is a generic with a generic example. So these are the results we've seen before. So 22 people uh, choose the same sentence. And the, the top 10 sentences are together chosen by 68% of the time. And this is uh, the resulting password, uh, how the top 10 passwords are chosen 36% uh, of the time and correspond to 4%. 4%. 
So if you compare with the control group, this is really no better than the, than the control group, uh, where people are not asked to use any strategy. So the personalized one is, um, um, as you see, there's uh, the top uh, sentence used once. The top password is used once. So the top, t so obviously, then the top 10 sentences are just used 10 times. So this is sort of uh, as good as you can get from, uh, from this, uh, uh, this uh, sample. And another thing we notice is actually among the, 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 the participants, over 500 choose the sentence that start with I or my. So I think that is um, a consequence of the particular example we use, which start with I. So people really sort of follow the, the, the example. So that also illustrates the importance of examples. OK, so um, yeah, so we studied uh, which one matters more, personalized instructions or the examples. So, the, so this, this variant only have a personalized instruction, but doesn't give any example. And this variant uh, didn't emphasize the uh, choosing a sentence that other people are uh, difficult to, 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 to uh, are unli uh, unlikely to choose. But then it gives lots of sentences that we believe are fairly personalized. Um, so we'll see how that, so yeah, so we can see how that works. So in short, uh, they, they don't work uh, as well as the having both. So, so there are five people choose the same uh, sentence uh, in here, and six people choose the same sentence when we didn't emphasize that, and, but have lots of personalized examples. Um, and yeah, so the top 10 are chosen 21 and 19 uh, t percent of time. So the difference between this group and the first group is statistically significant. And the difference between this and the, the personalized group is also statistically significant. So suggesting that you kind of need both elements in, uh, in order to achieve the best effect. So, so another thing I want to emphasize is, um, uh, so there's something very strange here. So the, the most common sentence is chosen five, per uh, five times, but the most common password is chosen 17 times. So that doesn't make sense, right? So looking at the data, we realize, so can you guess what is the most common password here? It's, it's one, two, three, four, uh, five, three, seven, eight. So because this variant, we didn't give an example. So as it turns out, uh, there are a significant fraction of the people simply didn't follow the instruction. So maybe they didn't understand it, or maybe, maybe they just didn't take the effort, but they just enter a sentence and then enter a password that's totally independent from the sentence. So again, that's something we didn't expect. We thought it's pretty obvious instruction, but apparently the, if you don't have example, then some people wouldn't even know uh, how to follow it. So then we also uh, evaluated the Snyers version and Yen's version. So, so both of them uh, have a, a much less uh, uh, collision rate than the, than the generic version. So in fact, the difference of this and the personal without example is, uh, uh, is not statistically significant. Um, and uh, the top 10, so, so, so the top 10 sentences uh, in, the, in the Snyers uh, uh, version are chosen 21% of time, but the, the, the resulting password, uh, our uh, top 10 password appear only 11, uh, only 11 times. So, so that is because the, they suggest, uh, so that is because in the Snyder scheme, they don't just replace a word with one letter. So uh, they have lots of examples where some of the words are completely included. So because of that, for the, from the same sentences, there's more variation from the, the password. So in terms of the top 10 collision rates, so these two are also pretty good. So we also studied uh, how do we crack passwords that are generated based on mnemonic uh, uh, strategy. So the first step is, if we know the sentence, can we guess the password accurately? So in order to do that, we essentially need to learn the, how, people are, how people are likely to uh, convert words into characters. So we realize there's really two different kinds of words. So for a normal word, what people are likely to do is to use the first character of the, world, uh, the, of the word. And then they may use uh, lead conversion. So A may go to at uh, and so on to convert it. So there's this sort of a two-step process when converting a word to a character. First to the first character, to the first letter, and then uh, lead conversion. And then there are special words where because of their meaning or sound, they will directly go to a, a special, uh, either a digit or a special symbol. So these are some of the examples. Um, so then uh, we, we 
designed a simple learning algorithm that sort of automatically distinguished between these two words from a training data set. Uh, so then we sort of start by uh, assuming every word is normal, and then we will see uh, which words have a distribution. In the example, they are mapped to things that are different from the normal. Then we, we extract them as special word and they iterate uh, this, uh, this process. So this is a result of um, uh, applying this uh, strategy when we know the sentence. So as you can see, in 10 guesses, if we know the sentence, we can guess around, I guess, between uh, slightly less than 40% and around 60% of the, of the password for these uh, four strategies that we, 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 we consider. So the other two strategies are more likely to have uh, um, a whole word is included. So therefore, this uh, attack strategy, as we just described, doesn't really work. So we need a more advanced strategy in order to be, to be effective. So that may also demonstrate it may be a, um, a good idea to encourage people doing that, because that increased an, uh, that created another source of uh, uncertainty. Uh, so as you can see, the, um, the one that are most difficult to, to guess is this uh, numeric uh, Oh, no, the, no, the one that are easiest to guess is this mnemonic personal example. Um, the one that are most difficult to guess is this uh, mnemonic with example. So this is the one that we don't have a personalized instruction, but instead we have lots of examples. So because there are lots of examples with lots of variation, so it seems that then when people convert password, the sentence into password, there's more variation. So then it's more, it's more difficult for us to, uh, uh, to guess. OK, so then now how do we crack when we don't have these uh, uh, sentences? So then uh, we use a pretty standard way. So essentially, when we do the uh, 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 attack, when we are trying to uh, 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 attack one set, then we will use the other set as a training data set. So then we learn the sentences from the training data set. We simply take the sentences that appear in the training data set and then use that as the sentences. And then we use our method to, to guess, uh, uh, guess password. So this is the result. Um, so this uh, uh, green line here is uh, simply a blacklist. So from the training data set, we take all the password. And then we use that to, to guess the testing data set. So as you can see, this works almost as well as our method, which is this, uh, this blue line, uh, which is you learn a sentence, and then you, 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 you make the guess. But one difference is using the blacklist, you, start, you sort of stop here. So after. I guess uh, slightly more than 2,000, there's no more thing you can, you can guess. Uh, I think we, we use any password that appear more than once to, to, to construct this dictionary. But using the sentence-based one, we can go more. So we can crack about, um, about seven, uh, 6 to 7% uh, with uh, this, uh, uh, maybe two, 200,000, uh, uh, no, 20,000 guesses. And then these are the, these other lines are the, the, the standard um, the standard Markov model based approach to crack, and you can see it doesn't work very well. OK, so to summarize, uh, I think the most important finding is the exact instructions describing the strategy and the example you use uh, matter very much uh, in terms of the uh, security of resulting password. Um, and looking back, this is not surprising, right? So obviously, what you told you that will have a tremendous impact. But we, we don't remember seeing that in the literature in terms of password generated strategy. And certainly, something we didn't fully expect, we didn't expect, we didn't, didn't think of when we started this study. And so uh, using a generic instruction example, we are resulting weak password or weak password distributions. Um, and instruction that specifically requesting personalized sentences and containing appropriate examples will lead to strong, uh, strong passwords. And uh, based on our uh, finding, both personalized instruction and examples are necessary in order to get the most benefit. Um, so in fact, we also conducted the usability study uh, of the password generated here. Uh, it's after a week, we asked users to come back and see whether they remember the password. Uh, so we only look at the, the, the two strategy, the generic and the personalized, the two extreme, and, and also a control group where they just choose a password. So from the study, we find that there's more than 50% of uh, participants won't remember the password they chose. So this is uh, uh, true for the two strategies we look at, but also true for the control group. So I think this is something we need to look more into. It could be just that because we warned the user uh, we are going to record the password, and they shouldn't use their existing password, they created a new one. And maybe that's true in general. If you create a new password, and 
you don't use it for a week, you are probably going to forget it. Or maybe there's a, uh, because this is a simulated study, it's not a real one, maybe people just didn't pay enough attention to remember them. So I think uh, more research is needed to, in order to understand uh, the, the memorability part of, um, of uh, this strategy. So do, do different instructions result in different memorability? So that's a sort of unknown question that uh, we need to be looked at. So um, obviously, another uh, famous strategy is this uh, four-word strategy uh, suggested by the XKCD uh, comic. So in fact, that we also look at this strategy and um, a bunch of variants. So choosing three-word, four-word, uh, two-word with different uh, combinations. So uh, our sort of preliminary uh, conclusion is four-word are as secure as the, the mnemonic sentence-based strategy. Um, and in fact, there's maybe ways to further improve that because the most common choices are pretty obvious. There's a cat, dog thing. So maybe those, if we somehow get rid of those, uh, forbid those, then maybe this can be even stronger. Uh, but right now we are looking into uh, how people make mistakes. So when people don't remember, uh, did they forget the word or did they forget the order? Uh, so we, we are trying to understand those. So. Um, so in our IRB, so we, uh, uh, IRB exemption application, so we mentioned that uh, we will be sharing the data set. And we, in the study, we caution the user uh, we'll be doing that. So as a result, we can share the data set we collected. Um, originally, we just wanted to put the data set on the website. But uh, one reviewer suggested that uh, don't do that. Instead, uh, uh, we can make it available for anyone who write to us. So if you want uh, this uh, data from this mnemonic strategies, uh, email me. So thank you for your attention, uh, and happy to take any questions. OK, thank you for your talk. <laughs>